Thank God for the inspiration that we received since we've been here. It's been good. Thank God for the good message last night. Very challenging, stirring, and certainly we want a revival in our soul. Lord, help us. We're not there yet. Despite what some are saying and thinking, we are not there yet. And the only way we're going to get there is admit that. We feel like we're there, and we'll be in trouble. This morning, we heard some preaching. To the precious saints of God, we'd like to speak to the sinner and the backslider. We come to a meeting like this, it's very grievous. We look out into the audience, sometimes on the grounds during the meeting. We see those whom we once rejoiced with. And they are walking around like zombies, living and yet dead. I'm glad, church, that I'm here this morning and I'm not just here, I'm saved. I'm glad I haven't had to repent and get saved several times since the last time you saw me. God has helped me and kept me saved. That's what it's all about. I'd like to invite your attention to Luke, the 15th chapter, if we may. A few verses of scripture there. And you pray for us as the Lord to keep us in one spot. We'd like to move around, but we don't want to be moving around on the stage too much. Luke, the 15th chapter, and begin reading in verse 11. And he said, speaking of Jesus, a certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. Divided, and he divided unto him his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him unto the, into, into the fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose, came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe. Isn't God merciful? Bring forth the best robe. Put it on him. Put a ring on his hand. Shoes on his feet. Bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. Let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost. And it's found, and they began to be merry. I'd like to invite your attention, and focus our attention on verse 17. And when he came to himself, as we'd like to speak to you this morning, so come to thyself. You know, we've heard preaching in this meeting, and I fully agree that we're living in the last of the last days. Most of us have heard that so many times it doesn't mean much anymore. 
It's just a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. Just a few words that we've heard rehearsed over and over again. But friend, this morning, those words are truer than they ever have been. With every tick of the clock, every passing day, we get closer to eternity. Spirits are being unleashed upon the world, such as mankind has never known. As we look out and see the condition of this land, it certainly is heart-rending. Pitiful the sights that we see day in and day out, over and over again. And yet mankind in general is totally oblivious to what's transpiring. Satan is almost fully succeeding in carrying out his plan to damn mankind. Most people that you and I come in contact with will never ever be saved. People are being devil possessed day in and day out. They have lying spirits and stealing spirits and lust spirits and dope spirits and all kinds of spirits. They're being pushed and urged by spirits and they have no control over themselves. They cannot resist that which is moving within them. Young people and old people and middle-aged people are being bound by the devil. They're more concerned about their financial welfare and their earthly status than they are their ever dying, or excuse me, never dying, an eternal soul. When you try to speak to people, they don't want to hear what you have to say. By and in large, they'd rather be left alone. They'd rather not be troubled. They'd rather not be stirred. So come to thyself. Listen, the world's on a road to hell. It's fast rushing there. The broad way to hell is as a, a gathering steam and people are rushing and hoarding up are trying to get on that road. And there are only but a few people here and there that even want to hear the gospel preached. Do you realize this morning, all across the United States, there's people standing behind pulpits and lying to the people. They're telling them that you can sin and, and be, uh, go to heaven. They're telling them it's all right to drink a little bit and it's all right to smoke a little bit and it's all right to have a girlfriend on the side. Preachers have uh, smoking rooms back in the back, winking at the uh, ladies in the audience, flirting with those in their uh, choirs, deacons lying and stealing and gambling, playing the lottery. We're living in a wicked world. The Bible says that when the world get like this, we'd better flee. The religious world is just corrupt. Corrupt to the core. We are living in the end time. And we best be right and be the church. Or we'll be devoured by the adversary. Sin is on the rampage. We have legislators that are doing all they can to pass and accept sin. They're doing and catering to get votes. And they'd rather throw morals out the window than to lose an election. Souls, won't you come to yourself? All the signs proclaim Christ near. All the signs proclaim him near. All we need is the gospel to be preached to all the world. And then the end shall come. Oh, what you see, we have in this nation, the United States, the Christian nation, the wholesale slaughter of our little babies every day. And brother, it's not just something they do, but it's legal. They just take little baby, little innocent children, cut them up, suck them out by vacuums and such. Don't you see that we've got people parading the streets, calling for their rights, saying it's all right what my sexual preference is. 
And we have legislators that are doing all they can to pass laws so they can get their votes. What's the matter with this world? It's sin. Sin's the trouble. Sin's the question. We have no salvation in a political party. There's no salvation in a job or a financial status. Having an education. But it's in Christ. Brother, we're fast heading to doom. Any nation that turns it back on God like we have as a nation. Brother, we can't expect anything else but judgment. How can we expect to be overlooked? How can we expect to be passed by when our sins are pounding on heaven? Oh, my friend. Oh, my friend. Won't you listen? Even one of those that's running for president is for this gay lib. Abortion. ERA. Mr. Mondale. Lord have mercy. And we can see that all these signs, he said there would be like this in this time. All these signs are prevalent. And yet men are sleeping and ignoring and pushing them aside. This is what is burdensome. That with all this going on, people should be running to God. They should be fleeing from the wrath to come. But on the contrary, they're running away from God. Hardness is settling in on mankind. People's hearts are getting hard. One time there were things that used to prick these men and women's conscience, but no more. It doesn't bother them. It doesn't bother them to slay our innocent children. It doesn't bother them to parade the streets. It doesn't, po- doesn't bother the legislators to sponsor gambling. When at one time the federal government would come into your home to shut you down. Even for a card game, let alone playing numbers. That was called racketeering. Friend, with all these signs, and on top of that, church people backsliding, and going away from God. We need to be running. Listen, the spirit of backsliding that seems like it's more prevalent now than it ever has been. And we're closer to the end. We have no guarantee that if we go back, we'll ever get back. God is not obligated and has not promised us that he will take us back if we reject him and leave him and forsake him. You'll be better off going out here to this airport and trying to fly one of these planes than to play with God. Don't realize what you're doing when you go out and backslide. Backsliding is no game and is no joke. And we don't take it lightly when you go back. We love you so, but friend. Amen. You, you brought a reproach on it. You need to be sorry about that. You brought a reproach on God and you need to be remorseful for, about that. Don't try to come back and be yourself like you used to be. Amen. If you backslide, you should come under the table. You should feel like if you had to be treated like a dog, it's okay. Just let me be saved. I've heard people often over and over again, they go back and sin. And when they come back, they're so sorry and regret it. Tell you, oh, I I wish I hadn't done those things. Now I have to fight against spirits I never had to deal with. And the things I said I'd never do, I found myself doing. You, when you get out in the devil's territory, he will push you and urge you and work with you and lure you until he gets you doing what he wants you to do. Backsliding is no joke. What you have done is told the world, God couldn't keep me. Didn't want to try to fight it out. I didn't want to keep going. And God couldn't keep me. Oh, this afternoon, in spite of all these signs and repeated warnings, 
The world's still lying in wickedness. The Apostle John said, in the first John, he said, we know we're of God. He wasn't bragging. He wasn't boasting. He just said, what we got, we know is real. We've been saved. John was telling him, I've been changed. There's something different about me than the way I used to be. And I got a communion with God, and I know I'm of God. And I know those that I'm associated with are God. Amen. I've seen some marvelous life change and redirected. I've seen some attitudes be uh, translated 360 degrees, uh, t- uh, 180, excuse me. I've seen people change and uh, live differently and act differently. And he looked at that and he said, we know we're God. And the whole world lieth asleep, slumbering, unawakened, unstirred. They haven't come to themselves. The whole world lies in wickedness. Man, in spite of all these repeated warnings, people are still backing, backsliding. People are still living in sin. Young people, especially around the church, don't think you can get by. Don't think you can escape. Don't think God's going to have special favor on you. Don't you feel like you can uh, 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 squeeze past some kind of way. Don't you take the attitude that you can handle it. The devil wants you especially. Amen. And and you are fighting against knowledge and light. Those things you've been trained. If you go against God like that, don't think for one moment that you won't be repaid in full for what you're doing. The scripture still saying is still true. Uh, uh, You reap what you sow. Be not deceived. God is not my. He won't be made a fool of. He won't be made a joke of. You won't mock him and make fun of him. Amen. Be not deceived. God is not my. For whatsoever. Whatsoever. Lying and stealing and gambling. Whoremongering, adultery. Whatsoever a man soweth. Dope. That shall he also reap. The longer you live in sin, the harder it's going to be for you to get saved. The longer you stay out there, the more binds and the more twines that the devil's going to wrap around you. He'll make you think that there's a better uh, time somewhere in the future. The Bible says that the time of our salvation is now. Now! Not somewhere out in the future because the future is not promised to us. Hell is filled with many people that had good intentions. Had decided or thought that one day they would get saved, but never did. As we read in this lesson here, this young man uh, was in his father's house to begin with. But he uh, began to desire some things that he shouldn't. And uh, the enemy worked on him. And he decided, I'm going to leave out of here. I'm leaving home. And besides that, I want all you, half of me, I want my portion. I'm taking off. So when he left, the Bible says that he, uh, when he had, excuse me, let's read verse 13. Not many days after the younger son gathered together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Sin is a far country. You say, how far? As far as the devil will take you. Amen. I've seen them go out and you, you, when they come back, they've done things they never ever did. Before they got saved the first time. Appalled and abhorred them, their own conduct. Amazed that they were, uh, the devil could take them that far so quickly. Sad you see people, they backslide. One time they're not at church, two or three days later they're doing something and you, you wonder whether they ever were saved sometime in the way. How in the world did you ever start doing this this fast? I mean right away you've run back to the vomit and the ungodly is so quick. Brother, there was a time when people would backslide. They'd walk up a different street to avoid the saints. Ashamed. Ashamed, ashamed of themselves. Condemnation, condemnation rested on their souls. They felt bad. They felt hurt. I've let the saints down. I've let God down. 
I'm a discredit to the congregation I was a part of. But now they come in and flaunt themselves. Look at me. Look at me. God's looking at you. You better come to yourself. There is somebody looking at you. Man, you don't have to come in with your beads and your short dress on. You don't have to come in with your makeup and all your worldly attitudes. Hey, man, come on. Man, we want you to be saved, but don't come with a bad attitude. We love you, but don't come in and try to be tough. You should be willing to get down on the floor. Why are you not saved anymore? You backslidden. You backslidden. You had Christ within you. You were living holy and you decided I don't want it. You failed. You let him down. You nailed him up to the cross again. You made the church a laughing stock. Look at him. <laughs> Was he used to go to your church? That saved boy there, that saved girl. They used to go to your church. Then I saw him down at the uh, disco last night. He still go to your church. He was dancing all night and smoking. He still go to your church. Brother, we feel so bad. Feel so bad. Hey Amen. It's not a light thing to be a reproach. It's not a light thing to just go out and sin and waste your life. Hey Amen. This young man had everything he needed in his father's house. He had it all. But he just decided I want something out there that I don't have in here. I want to try it out. I want to check it out. I want to see what it's like for myself. Daddy, you had your fun. Mommy, you did it. I want to see what it's like my own self. So he left home. And he went out there. And the Bible says, there he wasted. Do you see? It's a waste. It's such a waste. Your talents, your time, your effort, all wasted. All you're doing is heaping up wrath against the day of wrath. All you're doing is adding condemnation and damnation on yourself. Amen. Oh, friend, don't you see the sin such a far country and you're wasting, just wasting all that you have. Just wasting it. When you had so much when you were saved. When you were so blessed when you were saved. And now you're wasting it. This world's filled with backslides. You know that? Most people that get, get saved don't stay saved. Isn't that sad? Yeah. Brother, all the folks that got saved just in Springfield had stayed saved. We probably need a balcony by now. These, these sides of this building will probably be full if the folks in other locations, aside from where I just mentioned, had stayed saved. But as we look out here, do you know what we see? We see vacant seats. Vacant seats. And you know why that is? Because some folks are missing. Some people that should have been here. Some people that used to be here, but they're not here anymore. They're back spending their lives and their substance on riotous living. Wasting themselves. Getting old before their time. Dissipating. This young man, I believe, sunk lower than he ever dreamed he would. I believe when he started out, he's like a lot of our young people. They say, oh, I can handle it. it won't, I won't be too bad. You watch me. I'm going to be different than the rest. This won't happen to me. This won't happen to me. I won't be doing this. I won't be doing that. I won't come back this way. This won't happen to me. I'll still come to church. I'll be there. Even though I'm not saved, I'm going to make an effort. Brother, the devil not going to play around and let you do that. And he, look, he's out for your soul. Do you hear me? Out for your soul. He's not playing a game. Only, only ones that's playing is man. God not playing and neither is the devil. Man is the one doing all the playing. 
this young man here went farther, I believe, than he ever dreamed of. There he had went, and when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. It won't be long before you'll be there, if you're not already there. The devil's not satisfied till he gets you to spend everything that's good within you. He wants to glean every good and moral thing right out of you. He'll fix you so you will be, you'll be uh, loath your own self. Detest your own self. Amen! Oh, listen, when you look out there and see somebody backslidden and look like they're prospering, don't believe what you see. Did you hear me? I said, don't believe what you see. Because it's deeper than what we can see on the outside. Come on. The devil has them reaching and yearning for that carrot. And all the time is behind them, beating them, driving them, working on them. You can't see them at night when they have those wet pillows. You can't see them when the fear grips their heart when the sky turns red. You don't behold them when they feel so bad that they feel like they weren't even alive anymore. They come around and they act like they're doing so good and so fine. But that's all a facade. Amen! Ask some folks in their backs and they'll tell you. It's all a facade. The devil makes great promises, but he won't fulfill them. He'll promise you the world and won't give you anything but a hard time. Oh, saints. Souls. Souls. He'll have you sinking lower than you ever dreamed. Than you ever dreamed and you ever thought. He got folks out there misbehaving and can't straighten out. You know what he wants to do? wants to fix you and get you involved in something that is just too much as far as your personal pride is concerned to get straightened out. To come back and tell the saints that you messed up and they were right and you were wrong is just too humiliating. I have to fight against too much. I can't do it. And they stay out there and sin. Amen. Most backsliders die and go to hell. Mm. I said most of them do. This young man just sunk so low. The Bible says he began to be in one. Your time is coming if you haven't had it. Or you might have money. You might get the job of the girl or the boy you wanted. You might get the thrills and the pleasures that you desired. But your time for real one is coming. And down inside, that peace and that joy that you want, that is gone, long gone. Brother, we're better off having no money and saved. We're better, have, better off having no wife and saved. Better, better off having no husband and saved. Come on, we're better off. Salvation is the sweetest thing that mortal has ever found. I am a living testimony of what salvation can do. He can change you from the dance hall to the church house. Come on. He can change you from wildness and wickedness to righteousness and holiness. It's a joy that will never fade. Even when you're hurting, even when you're aching, you still got joy. Hallelujah! You'll be blessed to be a saint. This is the highest calling on earth. There's nothing better than this. This is it. This is what mankind is looking for. It's not the bottom, bottom of the whiskey a bottle. It's not the end of a cigarette. But it's in here. Hallelujah! Listen to this song. Who but the Christian is happy and free 
filled with the glory of God. None in creation so happy as he, washed and redeemed in the wonderful blood. Yeah, sing it for me. Thou art only thy glory. Yeah. Listen to this. Listen to this verse. Who but the Christian? This, this man by the name of Warner wrote a song called The Happy People. The Happy People. And he said, Who but the Christian? Not the rich man. Not the gambler. Not the hustler. Not the player. But who but the Christian? Who but the Christian? is happy and free, filled with the glory of God. Glory. Listen to what it says here. None in creation, none in creation, none. So happy as he, washed and redeemed in the wonderful blood. We got freedom within and freedom without. This is a marvelous experience. Why throw it away? Why catch it aside? You can't get anything better. Then you can't get anything better. There's nothing better. There's nothing superior. There's nothing that supersedes. Listen to what he said. Who about the ransom? can ever rejoice over the billows of time grace all abounding and hope's gentle voice glad in their spirits that never repine listen to this verse I like this verse tell me not then of the pleasures that sting coiled under roses of pride none but the holy and innocent sing out of a bosom where pleasures abide. How can a mortal? His brother was happy, wasn't he? I mean, somebody just sat down and wrote this song. You know what I'm saying? He's feeling good. Why? He was saved. I'm sure he met many wealthy men and many rich men, many uh, affluent men. He met those that were uh, out there or laying in the street and in the gutter. And he just sat down and said, how can a mortal? in fetters of sin taste of a freedom divine only where Jesus is dwelling within comfort and liberty truly may shine Jesus the one who my sorrows hath healed thou art the one who my spirit hath sealed only thy glory from heaven reveal only thy favor can happiness yield you can't be happy outside of it you can smile and laugh and you can be a clown but you can't be happy why because the only true happiness in this world in this world is salvation amen so church while you have it, hold it. Don't play with it. Don't toy with it. But hold it. Hold it as your life. Because that's what it is. Everything rests upon this. Staying saved. Soon this world's going to be consumed in judgment flames. This world will be burned up. All the works that are therein. That are all we'll have. Is our souls will be there before the judgment and it's coming we'll be there before the judgment to answer if we haven't done right we'll be lost amen man that's why it's so important that we nail the spirit of backsliding and tell and tell sinners the apostles said knowing the terror of the Lord we persuade men I'd like to ask you a question now. What will it take 
to bring you around? What will it take to cause you to come to yourself? This young man had been stripped of all that was good. Here he was, he went out, thought he was going to have a good time and enjoy sin. Only to find that at the end was bitter remorse and woe. He just got stung time after time after time after time after time. He had no joy and no happiness. He was feeling a downcast and bad inside. He knew that he was in trouble. He could see the handwriting on the wall. The Bible said he would have fain filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. And no man, no man could help him. Human help uh, was uh, uh, impossible. He couldn't receive it. His problem was deeper than a human being can reach. The Bible says here, and I thank God for this verse. I'm glad that I came to myself. You might get tired of me testifying, but I'm thankful I'm saved. I'm so glad how he delivered me. I'm glad he brought me to myself. But the red lights were flashing. The red lights were flashing. The train was coming. And I was running headlong. But thank God, just before I got ready to step on the track, Jesus reached out and snatched me. Said, stop. Stop. I got something better for you. Something more wonderful. Something richer. Something higher. That thing called salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I was just a hard-headed sinner. I was just a rebellious young man like some of you are. But just one day, in a moment, man, he just, he just lifted the burden and took sins away. And what a joy and a peace and a contentment just settled down inside. That restlessness and that roving. The all-night dance parties. The all-night card games ceased. And in its place, all night prayer meetings. Praise God forever. This young man here went a long way. I would like to ask you, what will it take to turn you around? How far must you go? How much must you do? How many sins must you get involved with before you get tired of what you're doing? Amen. When the young man persisted, if he had persisted in his madness, in his rebellion, the outcome of this story would have been a sad, sad, sad thing. But I'd like to know, I ask you again, what will it take to bring you around? What will it take to cause you to come to yourself? What more do you want? Do you want an angel to come down and speak to you? Do you want lightning to almost strike you dead? Do you want to come have several close calls with the death angel? What is it that you're waiting on? You put it off. You say, I'm going to get saved. The saints talk to you. I'm going to get saved. I'm going to get saved. I, I intend to. But you put it off all this time. And all while you're putting it off, the door is being slowly pushed closed. Slowly pushed closed. And it's getting closer and closer to the time when he closes that door. And then no prayers on earth can ever open it again. You might take it as a light thing and feel like you got plenty of time. We don't know how much time we have when we're playing like that. Amen. Don't go out of here unsaved. Don't go out of here uns unsaved. I remember reading about Brother Ringle one time preaching. And he, he was preaching to the audience, and he said he felt impressed to tell him. He said that the uh, tools and utensils that are going to dig someone's grave are at the graveyard now. But it wasn't but a few days later to one of those that was sitting in a meeting. 
unsaved and rebellious was buried. You need to take it seriously. Young people and old alike are going out of this world every day. All God had to do is get sick and tired of your sin and your rebellion. Hey man, we can't just shake our fists in God's face forever. And he won't be outside knocking forever. We had an experience. I was with Brother Robinson. We were going to see about this young man coming to church. I guess it was last Sunday. And, and we went up to a door. And we were knocking on the door. No answer. We knocked again. And he did. No answer. And he knocked harder. And harder. No answer. Brother, that just reminded me of how men are. Often you, God has tried to bring you to yourself. Knock on your heart's door. All you do is ignore it. Play like nobody's home. Act like you can't answer it. You're too busy now. You're too involved now. I got plans. I got aspirations. I got desires to fulfill. And then I'll get the door. We were talking said, you know, we're not going to stand out here forever and knock on this door. We're going to leave. That's the same way God is doing with people. Amen. Backsliding, sinner. Don't you see the signs? What will it take to bring you to him? Your predicament now is beyond human help. You can't get help in the psychologists and psychiatrists and sociologists and all these folks. They can't help you. Amen. They can, they can have you up on their table and take your $75 an hour, but they can't help you. You know why? Because they got problems of their own. They're sinning in the things in their life that they can't get the victory over. They got remorse and woe down on the inside and they're messed up. And you're supposed to be listening to their heartaches. Amen. The Bible says in verse 17, and when he came to himself, that's a blessed part of all men's life, to come to yourself. What? When the Holy Ghost begins to deal with you, talk to you, stir you. See, you need to be saved. You need to go to the altar. Never mind that baby. Don't pay attention to the ceiling. Don't try to sing the song along with the saints to get rid of me. You need to go down to the altar. You need to repent. You need to get saved. You're going to be lost if you don't get straightened out. And the young man began to consider, yes, yes, I am messed up. I have made a mess of things. And all it's going to do is get worse can't fix it. I won't be able to straighten it out. I'm all entangled now. I do want to get free. When you come to yourself like that, then the scripture is appropriate for you. Awake thou to sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. When you take an internal review, when you take an assessment of your life in all honesty, and chalk up things just like they are. I'm messed up. I'm not saved. I'm a sinner. I've been lying. I've been lusting. I've been stealing. I've been fussing. I've been gambling. I've been doing this or that. And I'm ready to get rid of it. I'm tired of it. Then and only then can you really say that you come to yourself. Amen. But it's not enough just to come to yourself. But there's some actions. And some moves that must be made. Don't just be stirred and not changed. Pray for us, saints. You know the part of the service that people take seem to take uh, often the most lightest is the altar call. I want you to know something this afternoon. The altar call is the burden of the service. We can come and preach and sing and shout and run the aisles. And when the altar call comes, we get unconcerned. We walk in and out. We stand back and chew gum. 
We play with babies. Brother, how do you expect God to work? And sinner friend, that's the most important time. When God begins to talk to your soul personally. When God of heaven dispatches the Holy Ghost and talks to you and reminds you, son, daughter, is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. There's still a hell out there. Say, where is hell? At the end of a sinful life. You live in sin and you'll find out where it is. The Bible says he came to himself. But he didn't stop there. So I will say to my father, I got some business to take care of. I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. I'm willing to get down as low as possible. Just take me back in. Just accept me. If I have to come in and the saints don't say amen when I testify, just let me be saved. Just let me obey. Amen. If I don't feel like I can shout or rejoice for the next three years, just let me be saved. How about it, backslider? He arose. So I'm not going to just sit here and think about it. I'm not going to just stand in the audience and consider my ladder in. But I'm going to make a move now. I would say he arose. And came to his father. But when he was yet a, far, a great way off. I'm so glad that God's merciful. And I hope you haven't gone beyond the mark. There are some that have. No matter how much you preach, how much you talk to them, they've gone too far. We have an example like that in the Bible. It's back several. I'm thinking of Esau. He was a man that had birthright. He came out of the uh, forest one day a little hungry. And his brother said, I'll give you some of this pottage if you'll sell me your birthright. Now the very fact that the man could talk showed me he wasn't anywhere near under death. But he decided that he wanted that pottage more than he wanted his birthright. And he said, I'm going to die if I don't get this. So it won't matter anyway. The desire I have is killing me. If I don't get it, I feel like I'll die. So you might as well go ahead and take it. The Bible says over there in Hebrews, when God, uh, through Paul, started talking about the man, he said he was profane. And he said he despised his birthright. And he tried to get back. He sought to regain his former position with Tears. Now, now listen. When tears won't move God, you are in a real predicament. He said, I saw it with tears. I couldn't find, I couldn't get it back. Amen. So you might not think very highly of salvation. You might not think very highly of that you need conviction. Brother, you'll never get saved unless God draws you and talks to you. Can't come to him unless he deals with you. And after he's dealt with you, you got to make a move. It's left up to you. God has done his part and his hands are clean. He said, I talked with you and I've dealt with you. I've shown you where you are before me. Naked and undone. This young man rose up, came to his father's house. Bible said, while I was a great way off, his father came to meet him. Hallelujah to God. Amen. It would do my soul good to see some precious soul just yield themselves over. Not for my sake, for their, but for their sake. Amen. I'm saving and tend to stay that way. But you're not. God saved, if I can use that term. In other words, he's in heaven. He doesn't need salvation. Don't misunderstand. But God's in heaven and whether you come or don't come, it's not going to change how he is and who he is. Amen. But the burden is on you this morning. It's your decision. 
You got to make up in your mind. You got to come to yourself. I can't do it for you. None of these other ministers or saints can do it for you. You got to do it yourself. And listen, if you're on the verge, if you feel like the devil picking with you and pulling on you, and you're almost backslide, you need to come down to the altar. If you feel on the edge, if you feel a tug of the world, if things don't look the same like they used to, if you feel yourself getting worldly, you need to get help. This man got up, came home. The Bible says when he got there, the, father, the son said unto the father, not only did he say he was going to say it, but he said, it. I've sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and no more worthy. To be called thy son. Lord, I'm sorry for all my sin. That's what he's saying. Please forgive me for everything I've ever done wrong and accept me back. I'm unworthy. I know I'm not worthy. I've done you, you uh, disgrace to your name, to your cause. But here I am. I'm asking forgiveness once more. Bible says, but the father said unto his servants, bring forth the best robe. Put it on him. Put a ring on his hand, signifying acceptance. Shoes on his feet. Bring hither a fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and be merry. That's some rejoicing. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. I'd like to read one more. Scripture in your hearing, and we're going to turn the service over. So we want you to come to yourself. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. I'll begin reading in verse one. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world had blinded the mind. He doesn't want men to come to themselves. He doesn't want you to come to yourself. He doesn't want you to be awakened to stir. He doesn't want you to realize the impending danger. He doesn't want you to realize how close you are to eternity and damnation forever. So he blinds your mind. Makes you feel like you got a long time and it's not that important and you can get it taken care of later. The God of this world hath blinded the mind of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves. I can't save you. Friend, if, if we can make you get saved, we'd have made you do it a long time ago. But then there'd be no glory. God's not taking folks to heaven in handcuffs. He doesn't have them with ball and chains, trying to keep you from backsliding, and trying to drag you to heaven. But he's got folks that want to be saved. That their mind is made up. This is what I desire. This is what I want. I prefer this over the world. Amen. I'm a volunteer. Thank you. I decide to join this army till the day that I die. This is my lot. This is my hope. This is all I have. If everything else is taken, this is what I have. This is what I intend to cleave to. Amen. Our gospel be here. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. This morning, friend, or this afternoon, you're standing in the same place as the great children of Israel were nearly 2,000 years ago. 
when Pilate stood up there at that great day and he had Christ and Barabbas and he said, whom will ye that I release unto you? Which one do you prefer? Nation of Israel, come to yourself. Send a friend, come to yourself. Backslider, come to yourself. God's asking the same question. Which one do you want? Who do you prefer? Oh, if they had said, we want Jesus of Nazareth. Give us Jesus of Nazareth. Give us that righteous man. All the writings of history would be so different. But very much on the contrary, their great cry was, the devil had blinded their minds. The Messiah stood before them, and they said, give us Barabbas. Give us this murderer. Give us this robber. Give us this insurrectionist. Give us the world. Give us worldly pleasures. Give me the dance halls. Give me that uh, fourth and fifth wife and girlfriend. Give me fun and pleasure. Give me a life of ease and comfort. Well, what shall I do with Jesus? I mean, I've, I've got to do something with him. You can't just choose one. I've got to do something with the other one. And, and the cry went up, let him be crucified. This afternoon, the audience is divided into two parts. There are those who will come to themselves, and there's those that won't. The choice is yours. Shall we stand? Dear ones, if you can feel any kind of pull or stirring in your heart, this afternoon, you're blessed. I've never seen a day such as we are now living. For the most part, backsliders aren't getting back, even when they try. Brother, we have re uh, exhausted just about all of our resources of late trying to get backsliders reconciled to God. Keep them overnight. Pray with them, fast with them, send them out of town, try to get them out from around familiar surroundings. But nothing, absolutely nothing, seems to affect our permanent cure. I'm frightened. I'm despairing of some. Brother, those who have enjoyed the glory of God can parade in your faces now with absolutely no remorse. Even in a service of this magnitude, feels nothing, no compunction, no conviction, no nothing. You can go out and laugh and be light as though they have not even been in God's presence. That's serious. Brother, when you can sit through a service like this and don't feel any stirring, any compunction, even those of us who are saved ought to be searching, let alone the backsliders, let alone the sinners. If you've been looking toward the world, I'd be on my face before Almighty God. I'd be down before God begging God to have mercy upon me. If I've had any tendency in that direction, if I was a cold form of church member this morning, amen, I'd be on my face before God telling God to save me. I'm sick of this foolishness. Amen, it's too late for that. Brother, we're living in a time, that it, let me tell you something, let alone a backslide of day one, but even people getting lukewarm and they're not getting straight out. Brother, people get lukewarm today, they can't even be affected anymore, let alone a backslider. It's serious, beyond words. People know that they're not where they ought to be with God. 
ministers of the gospel preach under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And there seems to be absolutely nothing in their lives that is capable of being awakened. And let me tell you this, dear one. Now, God has moved on some of your hearts, and no doubt the devil is saying, wait till you go home and pray, or wait until after service. Let me tell you this. Now, if you let the devil shame you out, or talk you out, or con you out of getting straight with God, you might never have this urge again. See, if God moves on your heart now, you don't wait until you go home and pray. You don't wait until I work out some things. I want to think some things through. You don't do that, dear one. When God moves on your heart, you respond then or you might never respond. When, after having been in this kind of atmosphere, whether you're a saint, sinner, or backslider, when you leave, you're not the same as you were. No, 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 no. Brother, in a service like this, you either get better or you get infinitely worse. Amen. And if you aren't mighty careful, and if you haven't already, you can murder everything inside your soul. You can murder everything inside you. Brother, no doubt there might be those in the audience today who are as dead on the inside as a doornail. I can remember even when I was a little boy, six, seven, eight years old. I could come to a service like this and I could hardly rest. Even among people who did not know this kind of truth. And now just people in an atmosphere like this have many times done so much to their conscience, to their very souls, that they can't even feel stirred anymore. Don't recognize compunction anymore. Go home and eat and sleep and laugh and joke behind a service like this. What are we singing, sister? What's the number? Use it, Margie. Your pro 399. Sing with us. What are you going to do? 